welcome everyone to another video today we're going to be looking at the cortex turrets um we're going to just start with the basics here of the light laser turret now it's very interesting this thing is uh similar and directly proportional to armada's laser turret except for one thing it has a slightly bigger range now, obviously, I don't have the Armada laser turret here to show this off, but you can actually take out an Armada laser turret with one of the Cortex laser turrets because of the slightly extended range. It has 80 to 160 DPS. 80 means that at the longest range, it will be 80. And at the closest range, it'll be 160 damage per second. <clears throat> so that's with most every uh, weapon most every laser weapon there will be a fall off to the distance but it's very cheap only 90 metal and it packs quite the punch for just basic defenses to hold off a push and next we have the twin guard this is basically double in fact i think it is <clears throat> yeah so it's just basically these two stacked on top of each other uh, a little bit stronger than the other version um and it has two guns so it'd be better at taking out like smaller units and groups of units uh like even tick spam it can double fire on them so it can take them out a little bit faster but uh the further uh turret or the top turret has a little bit longer range than the bottom turret so it's a, got an extended range compared to the normal light laser um so that's good for if you want to use like defenses to try to gain an advantage early game you can and then next we got the dragon maw um this thing is nice because it looks exactly like one of the walls so it's it's kind of hard to tell where they are on the map um, anyway the dragon maw you can uh do a gr a large area of attack where this whole area is taking damage and it does 320 damage now there's one thing i wanted to mention about uh these type of turrets Armada has the lightning turret, which is the counterpart to this. And they, so like, say someone had artillery, because artillery is the best way to take out any static defenses in the game, right? You're going to want artillery pieces because they can outrange most everything. Well, with the Dragon's Maw, if you have artillery lined up here, trying to bombard uh, the laser turrets, they will be bombarding everything except for the dragon's maw and the reason for that is dragon's maw do not give off a radar signature they have a little bit of jamming which honestly they might want to do like a little jamming symbol over them so that people understand that more easily um this game's still in alpha so there might be some additions later but that might be nice to just show hey this is radar jammed which means that artillery will not automatically target this unit. You have to manually target a uh, dragon's maw if you want to kill it. So that's something that's pretty useful. Okay, next we're going to look at the coastal torpedo. It shoots uh, torpedoes into the water. You know, good for hitting any um, like boats that might be in the water. It's better on like closer more restrictive water maps where you have like a river flowing and then you can put one of these here and it can maximize its range because these things is the the coastal torpedo launchers on both armada and cortex are not the best range so things like destroyers can outrange them pretty easily but if you have a river it becomes a little bit harder for them to do that so that's where you'll find them best used um very similarly to the other video i made on the armada turrets okay next we have the warden this is a, a laser tower that has an extended range of 620 versus uh the little twin tower which has a, a range of 480 so it's about 200 more range let's turn this off dps at the longest range is 100 and at the closest range is 217 so there's not quite as much damage fall off between that distance as you have for the uh, twin tower 
Now, keep in mind the Twin Tower is cheaper. It costs uh, 195 metal versus the Warden, which costs 480. So that's a significant change in metal um, there. So it's like four, no, twice, about twice as much, a little bit more than twice as much for the Warden. But this thing packs a lot heavier of a punch. And so be thinking about that. If you want like the DPS, then go for the, the twin guard towers. They're going to be a uh, higher DPS. Whereas this is just a longer range. It's almost like an artillery piece, honestly. It, it, it feels like it has the range of artillery. Anyway, uh, it has 2,700 health and the twin guard has like 1600 health um oh it also has an e storage of 200 i did not realize that not that that's going to be like significant or anything but it's good to know that it's there so i don't really recommend building the warden that much um unless you're wanting to just do some harassment with it it could be nice for that but in my opinion i'd rather build units that are able to move and like you know fighting that way i think this can outrange most uh t1 artillery though so that could be nice it's like an anti-artillery uh unit so if for some reason you're dealing with a lot of bombardment and your smaller towers keep getting hit you can build one of these up next to it to keep the artillery from being able to just freely destroy your turrets uh, but our uh, turrets are not designed as a like heavily armored unit they're like your units are your base where you should maintain like your full strength of your army and turrets i view as more of a bonus that you can apply extra damage to they have a slightly better damage to metal ratio than units the only problem is they are stable and they can't move so you're not going to be able to manipulate them as well to actually achieve that damage units can just go outside of the range and around them and that means you have to build more of them which can end up being worse because then you have more metal scattered around the map rather than condensed and able to be manipulated based on your enemy's movements so I'm not as big of a fan of turrets for that reason until we get to the late game, which we'll be getting into as well. Uh, we'll move on to the SAM. This is just an anti-air missile, very basic, costs 300 metals, so it's it's not too expensive. Only has 190 DPS and it shoots like a missile every uh, 0.4 seconds, so that's pretty good. But um, these are not like your highest type of missile or type of anti-air but they're more of a mid-grade anti-air speaking of which i did not build let me see let's get one of these guys over here i did not build the basic anti-air so this is your mid-grade anti-air and it's decent for like small amounts of aircraft like if someone's gonna try to do a little bit of scouting or maybe some gunships or some shurikens this can easily deal with those but something like a full-fledged bombing run it's not going to be quite as good against that just based on the dps 190 the eradicator this thing is meant for going up against large groups of air uh you, it could take out a t1 bombing run pretty easily it, if you had like two or three of these up and you know you're going to be going after or getting bombed that's the way to do it because uh, this guy takes, he has, let me see, where is it? 625 damage per second versus 190. So like three times the damage, but also costs, uh, well, not even three times the metal. It's like two, two and a half times the metal. So he's, he's got a better value on the damage as well. So keep that in mind. This thing is your main anti-air unit for Cortex and very, very effective. You'll, you can shred entire groups of uh, airplanes with that. And then this is the Thistle. It's pretty garbage. Only really good at taking out a couple units. Not It's it's worse than the SAM. It's your lowest grade. But in a pinch and you need it up fast, you can try to use that. It's just only got 67 damage per second. So it's not the most eff effective use of um, materials, really. 
Next, we got the aggravator. Wait, agitator. Sorry, not aggravator. Agitator. And this is your artillery. Uh, it has a low trajectory and a high trajectory mode. The high trajectory will help with like shooting over walls, but it has a slightly lower damage per second when you do that because it takes longer to reload. So watch this. Boom, the reload speed is pretty slow. So then let's go over here and we'll do a low trajectory. Much faster. Kind of hard to tell exactly, but it is faster. Alrighty. Um, so these are, these are decent for like holding a position that's well protected. You have, and so what I would recommend doing is having like a decent frontline group of units built up first. And then you could try to go for an aggravator if you want to do decent harassment. The, the catch is if someone ever sees you building one of these, they're going to push you. I, I, every time I play the game, every time I see people building this, I'm going to push if I know you have an aggravator like coming up. If it's not built yet, I'm going to be trying to squish you. So be careful on where you build this because the, if it gets seen, it's probably going to be pushed pretty hard. It doesn't have a ton of DPS. It's 200 uh, damage, but it also has a zone that it shoots. You know, it, it has splash. And so it's damaging everything in this radius, which is nice. So it's better at like killing groups of units rather than a single target. Um, but yeah, I would, I was, I would use these spare, sparingly. I almost never build them personally, but if you enjoy that style of gameplay and you want to try to do some harassment on the front early in the game, go for it. Just be careful because your team will like, or your enemy will likely have a metal advantage and could push you and destroy you. Not to mention the build time to get it up. These things have a significant build time. Okay. Next we got the pop-up. These things are pretty good. These are a T2. They shoot a, a rocket, which is pretty great. It's, it, it, it's essentially the same thing as the Armada counterpart, but they're very nice because you can build walls around them, uh, which I didn't really do here, but you can build walls and that helps defend against any um, oncoming attacks. So they can pop up over the top of the walls and shoot. So like anything that's trying to hit them previously would, would only hit the walls, which can be pretty nice. And the same thing with the dragon's mod, you can end up putting uh, walls all the way around it like that. And that will be a decent defense. Also, one thing with the dragon mod I wanted to mention, 320 DPS, very, very incredible. If you come over to the T2 factory over here, a fiend has 240. So it's almost like building a T1 fiend, but it can't move. So that's the negative. But it is a good way of eliminating pushes. People hate pushing into these things. Um, so 2,000 or how much metal is that? 29 metal versus a fiend, which costs 200. So or 200 metal versus 290 metal. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it also has a bit more damage. The only problem is it's a stable unit that can't move. All right. Next, we also have the persecutor. This thing is a uh, very similar to the uh, agitator. It's an artillery piece, but it has this a bit more of a long range. These are about the same range, but uh, this one's up further. So these things are your late game artillery, a T2, and it shoots a little bit faster, I think, than the agitator, I believe. Yeah, it does. So, um, the rate of fire is pretty nice on that. It's not the same as the Ar Armada version, which uh, I'm trying to remember the name. Anyway, the Armada version is cloakable, whereas this one is a fold down, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me see. I wanted to sh uh, test something here really quick, actually. I think you can build some better walls, put it in high trajectory mode. 
and then it can just fire over the top of those walls yeah that's a, a one thing you might want to try doing is just keeping it from getting hit straight on because the one of these walls has eight nine thousand health so that's a lot of health to break through just to hit uh hit your artillery piece so high trajectory yep boom so that's something you can think about trying obviously you lower your rate of fire but you also are protected so take a look at that see if that's something you like then we got the bulwark this thing's pretty crazy because let me see whoops sorry sorry about that um let's look at a little bit more in-person view here a little bit too close swing around here sorry about that guys so this thing has a lot of guns on it <laughs> it has one two three four cannons on it which is pretty crazy and it has uh up to 1500 damage per second which is insane so this is a very tanky turret it does significant damage let me get us back to where we needed to be sorry i just wanted to show off the cannons because it's pretty cool um so yeah this is this is with your like main t t2 like defense that you'll be wanting to build because of how ex extremely tough it is it's got 9000 health and it can shoot at long range with its main cannon that's very similar to i believe it's called the starlight on the armada side then it also has a medium range which does a bit extra damage and it can like compound with the heavy one and then it has a close range which has dual lasers and the medium range and the long range so this thing this thing is a monster it will just dumpster anything that gets close to it so definitely build these across your front line uh late game and you can even hold off t3 pushes with this it's very very effective for that and uh so use it in that way when you get the chance then we have the birdshot this is honestly in my opinion the best anti-air both the both the anti-air flat guns on both sides of the aisle as far as armada and cortex this is my favorite because they do a cluster shot so it can take out groups of planes versus the screamer which is a long range missile which is you know very long it goes all the way out to here so it can hit things really far away but it only really takes out one plane at a time from what i've seen it also has a set amount of five so you can't have more than five of those long range missiles this is better at taking out like a heavy unit that's in the air like a heavy bomber or the what are they called flying fortresses you could take those out as well um but yeah this is my core that i would build for anti-air later on in the game because it's really good at shutting down massive piles of uh air coming to like bomb your uh bases so you i would use this the majority and sprinkle in some of the screamers and now armada has its stunning but cortex has its complete and total destruction this is the catalyst it is not a nuclear launcher it is a tactical nuke so it's very it's a little bit different it has a, a decent range so it can get like halfway across the map from your base which is pretty nice and you can just launch a missile right out of it and this thing does decent damage let me see 2000 damage per second let alone per shot the shot alone let's see um the shot alone does 4000 so it's 4000 damage per shot so say you have a group of, of units that you just want to take out pop this guy up boom i don't think these are used quite enough because they they do devastating damage boom all destroyed <laughs> so check out these things try to build them a few times have fun with them i was having fun with them last night they are incredible
um don't go too crazy with them because they do cost you know 1200 metal each but they are very enjoyable anyway uh cortex has very similar units to armada uh similar in most areas as far as the turrets go but some differences such as their explosive missile launcher here that is something very unique to cortex anyway i hope you guys enjoyed and if you have anyone who's wanting to get into cortex share this video with them if you got value definitely subscribe and i will see you guys on the battlefield